So, Carbide Crate 7 Beta just released, and as with any release, headed over to blog and started reading through some of the changes. I was like, hey, I can see that one being useful. I can see, hey, a lot of people are going to like that. But then you get to the end, and that's where the juicy part comes in. Basically, if you're using Carbide Create, the free version, you're no longer able to generate G-code. That is now either behind an ecosystem firewall or you're going to have to pay for the pro version to get G-code. And we're going to talk about that more in detail uh, later on in the video. We're also going to go over some of the new features and what does that mean going forward for this channel as I like to use Carbide Create because it has that free version that people can follow along with. But before we get into all that, click on that subscribe, bell, like button if you're enjoying these videos. And it also helps me know what you're liking. So let's get into it. All right, to get started, we're going to talk about tabs and how they have changed. It used to be you go to Toolpath and you add all your tabs in there. Now tabs are handled in the design or vector part of your design. So if we wanted to add tabs, we click on our circle while we're in the design area. We come to this box right here, edit tabs, and we would go and place our tabs like we used to and then hit OK. And so let's go ahead, ahead and add tabs to all of these real quick. All right, now let's go over to the toolpath selection. And we can see here we got a, our circle selected and our tab width is three and our height is one. And then we can come over to this shape. And again, three and one, that's where we control the tabs. What I wanted to show you with this new way of doing tabs is, and I'm not sure if this is a, this is how it would always be, or if this is still something they're working on. Remember, this is beta, so this isn't a pick. This is just something I noticed and want you to be aware of. If you're using uh, version seven of the beta, you're fine here. If, let's say we select the circle, we go to design, and then we scale this our tabs stay there. Now let's click on this design and scale. So you can see our tabs disappeared. So you would have to come back and put the tabs. What I found is on circles and squares, the tabs stay there. Any different type of shape, they disappear. Just be aware of that when you're designing so they don't disappear on you. All right. Next is text. And I'm really happy with this because let's double click here. One that says left, and that's just meaning the alignment is centered to the left. If we click on center, you can see we got it aligned towards the center. And right is aligned to the right. What they've added besides what you see below here, text on an arc, we'll get to that in just a moment, is live update. This is the center. Not so much completely 100% live, but no more having to hit that apply to get your text to change on the screen. And they said they're going to be playing around with the how long it takes to, for it to update. So that is a nice one. No more having to hit apply and then go back and forth. All right, now let's look at text on an arc. And you can see here, we got our hello world. Let's just go ahead and create a new one here. Let's all click over there. We'll click on the text and say, this is a text. And then we'll come down here to arc, enable. Again, didn't have to apply. And then what we want to do here, depending on how you want this to go around a curve or an arc, alignment, center, and then it's going to center it in between this top circle and bottom circle. 
let's get ourselves a little bit of spacing, 125. Then to adjust this text on an arc, we grab, click on this top circle, bring it up and bring it down. So you can adjust it whichever way to get it closest to the arc you're trying to um, get the text to go around. Nice new feature there. Now, originally in previous versions, all tool paths were linked to an object. That has changed. You can still link a tool path to an object, but you can also link it to a layer now. So let's go here, click, select, this is a test. Let's click vCarve. Would you like to use the current selected item or select by layer? If you press the use current selection, you're going to cut what you have selected. But if you select by layer, everything on that layer is going to be applied a V carve. So let's go ahead, go back to design, edit, show layers. Let's add a new one. And this is our test layer. Okay. And then let's go ahead and we can move these off out of the way. Let's get all this, put it here, move this back over here. And then we'll select all our text. Let's say that we want to V carve all our text. Hit L to bring up the layers, and then we can say test layer, click here, move selection to layer, hit OK, come back to tool paths. Now let's hit V carve and select by layer, or test layer, and everything on that layer is going to get the exact same V carve. So this could speed up certain in certain cases. I can see some where you may not want to. You want to do a different type of V-carve. and But this is now uh, an option instead of everything on, you know, selecting and getting things grouped. You can just move them by layers and put them on that way. So it's just a little bit different way of doing things. Our next new feature expressions. So let's say for some weird reason, this was something you wanted to cut multiple times, but you wanted to cut it on different materials that had different thicknesses. You normally have to come into each one of these contour or each one of these tool paths, double click and change the max depth. Now we can use expressions. So if I type in T here, that is going to equal thickness. And it will cut the, it will pull the thickness from our setup here. So let's say I change that to six millimeters. Let's double it. Now let's go back to tool paths. Let's show simulation. And as we can see, it changes the thickness to whatever we set in the settings for the thickness. Let's say we didn't want to cut all the way through. We wanted to leave one millimeter of our stock material. So we could use thickness minus one, hit OK. Now show simulation. And there we go. It doesn't cut all the way through. If you use the equal sign, in any of these fields, you it will convert it to a numeric value and you'll lose that T. And which kind of brings us to the next point. If this was our design and we're like, I'm ready to cut, we'd select everything that we wanted to cut and then we go to save tool paths. And now this is what we get. Save tool paths in this file, save tool paths to a new C2D file. Save as G code, pro only. For all you free users who do not have a Shape Poco machine, 
This is where change is going to happen for you. By saving as a C2D file, you're going to have to use Carbide Motion, which only works on ShapePoco machines. So the G code file is no longer going to be available to you if you're using the free version and you don't have one of their machines. Effectively putting Carbide Create within a ecosystem firewall slash behind a paid firewall. So exporting G code is where the major change in CC7 is happening in the free version. In Pro, you'll still be able to change it. For Shapoko users, you'll be able to save the C2D file and then uh, load that up in carbon mo carbide motion and cut and go about your day. You'll have a little bit different workflow as you'll have to save different files. Um, you'll save different files as cut paths, but we're not getting into that. We'll, and we're also not going to get into a debate about whether this move is good or bad, or critique, anything like that. What I want to focus on is going forward for this channel. Do I still use Carbide Crate Pro and put that out there? Or do I go and try to find a new software that anybody, whether it be freeware with a pro version and use that so everyone has access to it and can follow along? Do I just shut up and move down the road and keep using CC Pro? I don't know the answers to those questions yet. Uh, I'd like to hear what y'all think and not what you think of them doing this. They're a private company. They can do what they want to do. And me as a consumer am allowed to not agree with that, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, getting angry about it, fighting and doing all that's not going to solve or move us down the road. So, let me know down in the comments what kind of software we should start looking at or if we should start looking at something else. I'm really at a loss here. I was not expecting this. Uh, I was actually working on another video and had to pause that one so we could look at this, talk about it, and start thinking about the future. I have looked at a couple not 100% sold on anything, so maybe we do a series looking at all the different free options for some of the paid options. There's no way I can afford to buy every paid version out there, but we're going to see what we can do with free trials before things expire. And one thing I'm going to say right here and now, I'm not using easel. I can't stand it. Sorry. Just pers my personal preference, I don't like easel. But that about wraps it up for this video and thank you for joining remember if you're enjoying all this uh content hit that like subscribe bell button lets me know what kind of content you guys are interested in and until next time keep making stuff